This is my Dogecoin Nightlights project. It consists of 128 individually addressable LEDs and it connects directly to the lamp socket within this uh, 3D printed armature. In the light is definitely not winning any beauty contests, but the whole thing comes to life in the dark. Now, how is this a Dogecoin project, you may ask? Well, every light that turns on is a Dogecoin transaction happening somewhere in the world in real time. The intensity and duration of the star depends on the amount of Dogecoins moved in each transaction. This is probably the nerdiest project I've ever made, but it is kind of satisfying to lay back in bed and watch the Dogecoin blockchain in real time. So let's open the lamp up. And here is the circuit. So if we take a look inside, first things first, I have a high side fuse here at uh, 200 milliamps. And that is just a precaution uh, for the main side of the thing. And because I'm not too comfortable working with mains voltage, I made it very simple for myself by uh, just connecting uh, one of these high link uh, encased supplies. So the AC comes in through the uh, contact here, goes into the high side of the supply and then comes out as 5 volts and uh, with a maximum of 4 amps. The actual circuit won't draw anywhere near 4 amps but I figured maybe in the future if I want to make something that will actually light up my room a bit then uh, I can actually use uh, this supply for that. And then I have a PTC uh, resettable fuse here and uh, then I have one more fuse so this thing actually uses three different fuses. I have one here at uh, around 1 amp and that is for the uh, USB connector I have down here. And the USB connector will allow me to program this without having uh, to plug it into mains. And then I have a bulk capacitor because it's 128 LEDs. And then uh, this part with the MOSFETs down here is used uh, to set which power source should be used. Now I could have used uh, two uh, diodes here but it's more efficient to go with uh, MOSFETs. This way the uh, mains power supply will get uh, priority. So if you have both uh, the mains connected and you have the USB connected, then it will uh, draw the 5 volts from uh, the big power supply. Other than that, most of this circuitry is just for the uh, ESP32, such as the UART uh, converter here, which allows me to program the ESP directly with uh, USB. Otherwise it's just the debug headers, some buttons that I can use to put it into programming mode, and then I got a debug LED. And then on the bottom I have a button. And what the button does is uh, put it into uh, configuration mode. So then I just connect to it through Wi-Fi and then I can set up how many LEDs should be on, how long they should be on, etc. And it also has uh, an RGB LED here which shows the status. And if we take a quick look at the schematics, we have the ESP up here with just some filtering capacitors. And then this part is the power source selection so that the big supply here should have a priority over the USB supply. And then of course the bulk capacitor. And then I have the AC mains voltage coming in here, going through the uh, fuse, so I increased the value to 200 milliamps. I could probably have used uh, 100 milliamps if I used a slow blow one, but it didn't have any at home, so 200 would work. And then we have the power supply that converts uh, the uh, high voltage AC to low voltage DC. And down here we have the connection to the NeoPixels, the LEDs. And the data goes through a 330 ohm resistor. And I also have an optional 22 picofarad capacitor here that I don't think that I'm using. Uh, but I've had to use it uh, on my, the LEDs that I have outside on my house because the uh, data signal got corrupted because the wire is along. I just added it just in case I wanted to use this somewhere else. And then this section here is just debug LEDs and the buttons for programming, reset and configuration. And then we have the uh, USB to serial converter and this is just a setup you, you, you'll have to do when you're using the ESP32 in order to get it to uh, program automatically. And then finally we have uh, the USB port and then we have the TVS diode just to uh, prevent it from breaking from any transient voltages just in case, it's always good to have. And then there's the voltage regulator and finally the debug header. So it's not really a complicated circuit. 
Anyway, I hope someone finds that interesting, maybe even learns something from this. And I know I've been uh, doing a lot of crypto projects, but it's just I've been having a lot of fun with uh, actually programming with uh, crypto recently. So I'm probably going to do uh, like one or two more of those and then maybe do something different.